Lean is an important value chain for going for a sustainable society. It can be used to replace fossil-based products. Lignocity is a unique test bed in the world. We can produce lignin from different black liquors that is, comes from different paper mills and uh, we can scale it up from uh, only a few grams up to tons. Lignin in one sentence is the glue in wood, but you can extract it uh, in the process we do here in Ligna City. And instead of burning it in the paper mill, we can uh, create a higher value with uh, evaluating the lignin into uh, different products. It can be in asphalt, it can be made carbon fiber out of it, and it can be made bioplastic and many other applications. Uh, the test bed is located uh, as a neighbor to Nordic paper, where the black liquor comes from that we uh, produce lignin out of. Within the test bed Ligna City, you also get contact with the, the research institute RISE. We can help companies that are interested in the lignin value chains, from the raw material lignin to the end products. So here at RISE we have resources to work on the lignin that produce in Ligna City. The, we work on the different applications such as uh, thermoplastics, thermosets, chemicals and fuels from lignin. So in this lab, we make lignin-based carbon fiber and use it in different applications. For example, in this car, you can see the roof is a lignin-based carbon fiber composite that the carbon fiber were made here in this lab. Also, this car has a lithium ion battery that in this battery also we use the lignin-based carbon fibers. In Lignocity, we want to welcome small and medium-sized enterprises that we can help to take the leap from idea to market in small and safe steps, which reduces the risk to scale up. Our time here at RICE was, was a key in our development. It helped us to have our products ready for the market, and now we are moving on and, and starting our demo plant unit outside Stockholm, where we will produce 2,000 tons per year of our material right now. This is one of the end application of what we do at Rencom, using lignin to make plastic bags. The name of it is Renol, and we can mix it with bioplastics or fossil-based plastics, depending on the applications you want to do with it. Region Värmland is strong in bioeconomy, partly because we have a lot of forests here and the skills in how to create different applications out of the wood, but we want to grow even better and bigger on the bioeconomy and lignin is one track. Here we have space for new possibilities with conference room, facilities and the laboratory. everyone and very welcome to today's webinar from Ligno City. I hope that you could uh, enjoy your small film now in the beginning and if you had any problems with the sound or the uh, video uh, then you can uh, visit YouTube to see it again with uh, no interruptions in case you suffer them. Uh, we are ready to start and we'll present today Amid Hosseini from RICE who also uh, showed up in the film. And after him will Anna Carlson from Brighty Graphene also talk about their journey with the company. My name is Maria Olmholt and I work as a project manager in the Ligna City testbed and I also work with business development. And the testbed Ligna City is located in a Bäckhammar in Kristinehamns municipality in Sweden. Uh, this event will be recorded and uh, later on it will be available on the Ligna City website. And we do plan to organize more of these events. This is the third one that we uh, present so far. And if you have input on what you would like to listen to, please use the chat uh, that you can find at the bottom of your screen. Just uh, press there and you can type your message to us. And uh, also during the webinar today, please uh, write your questions in the chat and we will respond to as many as possible within the time and we will limit us to the one hour dedicated and uh, so happy that you take the time and uh, join us and for the best experience you can choose to 
uh, change to the speaker's view and the view options in Zoom you find at your upper right corner on the screen. So you can play around with that and please keep your microphone muted in case you're not one of the speakers and then it's up to you if you want to show up on the video or not. Um, at the end we will uh, take as many questions as possible and if we don't manage to respond to them within uh, the meeting, uh, then we will do it afterwards. The Ligna City project, where I am one of the project leaders, is a collaborative project and it's between the parties RICE, Christina Hans Municipality, Paper Province, Costa University and Nordic Paper and also Rencom. And the start of the project took place in 2018 and it will run until the end of this year. The project is financed uh, with help of uh, the EU Structural Funds Programme and by the project partners and also Region Bermland. And at the Lignin City Testbed, we produce lignin from black liquor. And uh, today and during the upcoming webinar, we will present how lignin can be used in various applications and how you can benefit also from our network. Uh, the project has ambitious goals to spread knowledge about lignin as we do here today. And an important work in the project is also to help small and medium sized companies or idea bearers who do not yet have a company, but to reach out to the market and uh, grow their ideas in the bioeconomy sector, preferably with a writer connection to Lignin, uh, but also others within bioeconomy. And we want to do this in small steps as resource efficient as possible. And with the help of the network that we have access to here in the Värmland region and in the project. So it's thanks to Ligna City that we have gathered within this event. And first out to speak today is uh, Omid Hosseini, and uh, he's a researcher at RICE. And please present yourself, uh, Omid. Welcome in. Thank you, Maria, and hello, everyone. Hi, Omid. So, hello. Can you hear me? Perfectly. OK. So I will share my screen for the presentation. Just uh, do you have the presentation in full mode, in full screen mode or? Okay, I cannot hear you, Maria, but anyway, I will continue. Now, now I just got that from it. Yes. <laughs> Remember to write your questions to Amid in the chat. You can do it at any time. Yeah, Please okay, thank, thank you. So I will talk about lignin-based carbons. I just before starting the presentation, I need to mention that uh, lignin-based carbon and application of this material is a very broad area. So here I'm not going to review everything. So I will just mention some of the work, I mean, research and development that we were involved and also Besides, I will also present some of the interesting data from the literature that are related to this topic. I'm not going to give a, a big introduction on the topic, but I just want to mention that why we consider lignin as a good precursor for making the carbonized material. I mean, it's mainly back to the structure of the lignin that is, has a high carbon content, especially when compared, for example, with other uh, Bio-based material, bio-based uh, polymers like cellulose and hemicellulose, and also this has the, also lignin has this aromatic structure that gives it uh, very that helps to retain the carbon during the carbonization. I will start with the one of the maybe main material that you can find in the literature, uh, one of the main carbonized material from lignin that are lignin-based carbon fiber. I mean, the starting works on the lignin-based carbon fiber started maybe 50, 60 years ago, but then a lot of development has been happened during this time. But there are three main methods for making lignin-based carbon fiber. I mean, these are solution spinning, melt spinning, and electro spinning. So what we are involved in all this method for producing carbon fiber for different applications. In case of the solution spinning, also we are doing a lot of work on solution spinning of lignin and lignin cellulose blends. The production process for manufacturing lignin-based carbon fiber, I mean, depend, it, it doesn't matter which process we make the fiber. So it's the same start with the spinning after that thermostabilization for 
followed by the carbonization. And at the end also, we can do different post-treatment. It would be like activation, surface modification, or other treatment to change the property of the fiber. So the properties of the fiber in, along this carbonization or thermal conversion will change and the structure and morphology of the materials. The application of the lignin-based carbon fiber, I mean, there are two main applications would be this, uh, especially fibers, for example, melt spun or solution spun carbon fiber are mainly for a structural application. Fibers from the electro spun, uh, uh, for the, from the electro spinning due to the property that they have this high surface area are mainly uh, the main application that we are aiming with is on the energy storage or also other application would be like a filtration and gas storage. Melt spinning, I mean, if you want to point out this, maybe it's the, one of the most common method for producing of the fibers. So it's considered also to be the most cost effective and also fastest method for producing the carbon fiber. You can see in the literature, a lot of data on the carbon fibers from, from the melt spinning process. I mean, the main challenge is to produce, the, to increase the property of the fiber, especially in case of modulus. Here are some of the data from the literature and some samples that we produce. This hasn't been the, maybe the most recent one are not included, but I try to cover some of the most important data in the literature and property of the fiber or still more or less in this, the maximum are in this, uh, are in this range and still efforts are ongoing to improve the property of the tensile property of the, these fibers. Uh, this, I, for making the carbon fiber, I mean, one important step is to, a scale of the process for producing the fibers in the larger scale. So here is the one of the project that we were involved to produce uh, melt spun lignin, fi lignin based fiber in the larger scale. So this is the semi close to pilot scale uh, fiber spinning that we did this uh, pure softwood craft lignin spinning. So after spinning also we need to have the fiber that possible to unwind from the spools for the different, for the following process. Applications, I said, this is mainly for the structural application that this uh, lignin based carbon fiber can be in the woven in the form of the woven mats after that in the use as a, in composite as a reinforcing. Also, for example, we have a toy car demonstrator that we made it and in this toy car that as you see also in the video that we also use this melt spawn fibers as electrode, anode electrode in the lithium ion battery. The composite, I've said, main application for this fiber. Here you can see an example of the composite that made from this melt spawn fiber and the property of the composite. Electro spinning, as I mentioned, is one another method for producing fiber. So this method is simple and also very popular for making submicron fiber. I mean, this electro spawn fiber have a already commercial application in biomedical and filtration. In case of the carbonized material, when we carbonize this material, we see a lot of the promising property, both in case of the conductivity and also strength of the material and stability and all, plus the flexibility of this material that gives make this material very excellent candidate for uh, application in energy storage, for example, as an electrode in supercapacitor or battery. Also, high surface area of this material is another advantage that makes it uh, um, very good material, for example, for storage of gas storage, or even, for example, for the absorption of the CO2 or as a filtration in both water and air. The electro spinning, I mean, is the process that is very flexible in case of the using the material. I mean, the precursor, we can use different lignin for producing the electro spun fibers. Also, we can add different additives, for example, like graphene add during the manufacturing of this fiber. So with this, we can change the property, for example, make the fibers more conductive. Also, we can do different post-treatment, for example, like nitrogen doping or also reduction after production to change the surface functionality of this material, depends on the application that we are aiming. 
intellectual spinning also, I mean, the, uh, for to move toward the commercialization, one main step is to produce this material at the larger scale. Here is one of the projects that we were involved with and with, the, with our partners and we try to use the, to spin lignin at the, I cannot now run the video. I mean, the previous one run by itself, but this one doesn't run. So we try to, uh, spin lignin on the large scale unit. This is the from the soft 100% soft food craft lignin and we, this is the needleless electric spinning system. Maria, do you know how can I start the video? Okay, see here. So here are two wires that lignin solution. I mean this uh, from this, uh, this is like, this is for example, in case, you know, in main electric spinning system are based on this needle. So here is without needle, this wire um, lignin solution is on this wire. After that here, if we have this formation of the jet and the top later on, you will see is the collector that is the, it's a roll. So it can continuously, we can continuously deposit fiber on the roll. And after that collect also as a big roll of the fibers. Here is the collector on the top. I said based on the property of this fiber electrospun fiber, you can see these fibers are mainly, I mean, from volts. So it uh, gives 90%, for example, vol volume to this sample that is from, that we did the uh, X-ray uh, analysis so the that gives a very low density to this material if, especially when we compare to the density of the carbon and we try to up, use this material as electrode in both batteries and supercapacitor here you can see some of the data for example here is the capacitance in the supercapacitor and we see by increasing the surface area this is after activation how the performance of this material improved also in the batteries also as in the anode as anode in the sodium ion battery we see the uh, capacitance from this material and all and this also of course we can carbonize this material at different temperature and here is the sodium ion battery that we see has a more potential in especially with the hard carbon that we produce from lignin we just talk about the hard carbon. I need to mention that the difference between hard carbon and graphite, I mean, from the carbonization of the material, we can form, I mean, two main type of product are graphite and hard carbon. In graphite, we have this order structure that gives a different property, for example, in case of the density, much higher density compared to the hard carbon that at, at even higher temperature, I mean, in the graphitization temperature after 2000, the structure is not completely ordered. We have this random orientation of the graphene layer. So this, this structure has a lot of voids and defects. So in main, this which affect the property of this material, for example, in case of the thermal and electrical conductivity that graphite has a much higher values. I mean, there are different methods I mean, uh, from the uh, graphitization of the lignin. So this has been tried and you can see a lot in the publication, different method that has been tried for the graphitization of the lignin. This is the X-ray is a powerful technique to study the structure of the carbons. Here you can see this, um, the X-ray, I mean, to the, to the pattern from the lignin carbonized at the different temperature by increasing the temperature even at 2500 it is still the, the we don't have a short peak like for example what we see in the uh, x-ray of the graphite so that shows this low degree of the graphitization even at the high temperature for lignin and we can easily compare the crystalline parameter for example by interlaying comparing the interlayer spacing and also crystallite size that we see the interlayer spacing is uh, that for lignin at 2500 is much uh, larger than the graphite so that's also another indication of the low degree graphitization in lignin we talk about the different method that has been tried for graphitization of the lignin. Maybe the most common method is using the different metal catalysts. I mean, different mechanism has been proposed for conversion of the lignin to graphite. 
by using this method that is include this uh, dissolution and precipitation mechanism, also this formation and decomposition of the metal carbides. So you can see here an example that show at the different temperature, how the structure of the material changed that we see a large degree of the graphitization at even thousand degree by using nickel. So the DS spacing also you see that is even compared to the uh, lignin that carbonized at uh, 2500 is, is a smaller, it's much a smaller. Nickel and iron are quite most common catalysts that has been reported in the literature. Another method for graphitization, this is also something that my colleague at Rice also, they are working a lot is using the laser. So laser shows that it's a, it's a very powerful um, technique for the graphitization of the lignin. So it's, of course, it works mainly on the surface. So it's very, it's, it's very good for producing the printed electronic and sensor. So the, 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 the process is, for example, dissolving lignin in a solution to make the lignin containing ink after that printing it in the, in the surface and later on lasering this surface. So this would be uh, excellent material, for example, when for uh, like a sensor, this is a humidity sensor that has been made uh, from this material and you can see the degree of the graphitization is uh, much higher to, based on also the spacing compared to the lignin that has been carbonized in a furnace. We, I mean, graphene, graphene also is another topic that we, in the next presentation, you will hear more about it. But uh, uh, this is an, one example that I found quite interesting in the, based on the method that they used for producing the graphene. So the method for the graphitization is using this uh, metal catalyst, I mean here iron. After that, the, you can see this graphene that formed around the iron. So later on, they use this um, different mechanism to crack and break this graphene layer. So here is broken and this shear and this layer has been separated. And later on they, uh, by the welding process, so they connect this sheet so to produce a multi-layer graphene. Of course, it's also followed by the different process for the purification of the material. Lignin carbon as absorbent also, this is also very common application and you can see a lot of reports in the literature on using lignin for, for example, for removing pollutants, for the gas storage, for removing the uh, solvents or for, uh, for separation of the solvents in the literature. So this is an area is also we are working, we are working a lot on this part. Here is this, some of the result from my colleague that he's working a lot on the activation of the lignin-based uh, fibers. So here you see the hydrogenous absorption in the lignin that has been uh, activated with different methods. So you can see the values that in some case even is uh, higher than the commercial activated carbon or activated carbon fiber. Another interesting area for the application of the lignin-based carbon or this as a thermal insulation material. This can be used as a different form. I mean, one of the main uh, reports that you can find in the literature, or I would say one of the works that has been done in a large scale is producing this thermal insulation material from melt balloon fiber. This work was done by Graftec and ORLN. This was for the producing this uh, insulation material for the furnaces. Also, another form of this material would be this carbon foam that is also you can find a lot of reports in the literature. So this uh, producing this foam from different lignin with different foam structure and different, uh, for example, formation of the cells that gives the, uh, the very good insulation property to these materials. I think this was the last slide and if you have any question I can answer or after that we can listen to presentation by Anna. Thank you Mid, for your presentation and uh, yes we do have questions and the first one is uh, how is the lignin treated for using it in carbon fibers? I think partly you responded to it but if you do a recap I mean the treatment back to the for carbon fiber to the 
process that you want, for example, use, it depends. I mean, if you want to do melt spinning, you need a, you need a lignin to be fusible at the certain temperature that you want to do a spinning. If you want to do electro spinning, the lignin to, need to be soluble in the solution. So it's back, it's back to the system that you want to use. But in general, of course, you need a lignin with the high purity. So we, we have, we do, or you can see in the literature also different method for the fractionation, purification of the lignin and many other pretreatments that need to be done before, like heat treatment before the spinning. But how long have you been working with this, uh, Omid? With lignin-based carbons, maybe about 10 years. Good experience. Thank you. <laughs> Impressive. And a uh, uh, question from the chat is also, which is the main source of lignin that is used? I mean, for starting biomass. From, I mean, craft lignin is a dominant process. So most of the work also I presented and also you can see in the literature are from craft. Also, this is also the main lignin that we are using. But of course, we are working on the other lignin from the different process like organosolve and also this biorefinery lignin. Soft wood craft may be most common, but also hardwood from eucalyptus and birch also are quite common. Perfect. And Evelyn, uh, thank you for responding also in the chat. And if you have more questions coming up, just keep typing them and uh, we will answer either writing back to you or responding to you directly. And um, Omid, what, what would you see, say is the biggest challenge in uh, this application for lignin? I would say in some cases, I mean, it's it different to the, for example, if on in the structure application, the main challenge is the property of the, for example, material, the fiber that need to be, need to be reaching the certain property for to attract the main, for example, producer of the composite. In some other area, still I mean to attract this uh, main uh, it's, I think still a lot of effort need to be done to convince people that it can be a good replacement for the current material they are using. And what do you think will happen in the next coming years on this uh, topic? I would say a lot of progress. I expect a lot of progress in the area and also with the attention that we see, if, I mean, we see a lot of concern about this global warming, carbon footprint, Print and also using the sustainable material, I would see we will see more and more about lignin-based product. Yeah, we hope so. It sounds very promising. Uh, we don't have more questions uh, now, Amit, but uh, please you stay in, in the webinar and, and have a look at the chat as well. And if you can respond to upcoming questions directly there, uh, that would be grateful. Thank, Thank you, Amit. Uh, virtual applause for you. And uh, Anna Carlson from Bright Day Graphene is next to speak. Welcome, Anna. And I will also mention that our next webinar that will be in the mid-April, but uh, the specific topic is not yet uh, uh, official. So we will come back on that as soon as we know with invitations. Hi, Anna, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thanks. And it's a great interest. Uh, and we're so happy about that. And uh, we do see your screen perfectly and we hear you very yeah. well. And uh, now no. we have a presentation view. So <laughs> great. Here we go. Will, will you shortly uh, explain who are you before you start? Yes. Uh, so I am Anna Carlson. I am the CTO of Brighty Graphene and the co-founder. Co um, I uh, I have a background not with lignin and not with graphene. I have a background in energy storage. So I did my PhD in the fuel cell area in Germany because I wanted uh, to do something to stop using oil. And uh, even though I don't work directly with fuel cells right now, this is still my mission. So I'm really happy uh, yeah, to be working with lignin and bio-based materials. Great. We look forward to listening to your presentation. Yeah, thank you. Um, so as I said, uh, I am the CTO of uh, Bright Day Graphene. And uh, today I will 
uh, tell you a little bit about uh, us and how we are scaling up uh, our production of quali high quality graphene from lignin. Uh, Brighty uh, graphene was founded in 2017 by me and Malin Alpsten. Uh, we were then called Brighty Prototypes, and this is a subsidiary to Brighty Inventions, which we started the same year. And uh, Malin is uh, the business side of the company, and I am the technical side of the company. And uh, we were doing this by ourselves uh, until last year, where uh, Ekman joined us as an investor. Uh, and uh, we have a sting in bioeconomy in Värmland, uh, uh, who are our incubator. And uh, yes, and as we got, uh, we got uh, capital, we were able to grow. So this is now our team today. Evgeny uh, is uh, Moon and Tuche is in the technical team together with me. Uh, Evgeny is, uh, has a PhD in physics. Moon has a master of science in uh, nanotechnology. And um, uh, we are we're continuously working on our lab pilot and uh, uh, working on uh, quality uh, and preparing for the next uh, part, which is a, uh, industrial pilot production. And this is why Tucci joined us uh, last week. Uh, she is helping uh, us with um, uh, start to work on the scale up uh, and. Uh, everything which one has to think about then, which I don't know. Well, I, I studied uh, chemical engineering uh, when I, before I started with fuel cells, but uh, I have not worked in process industry at all. So I'm really grateful for the help. And uh, Emma also joined us uh, uh, in the beginning of March and she's helping us with uh, uh, marketing and uh, finance. Um, yes, uh, so why uh, graphene? Uh, I guess that many of you have heard about the hype around graphene. It got the Nobel Prize in uh, 2010. Um, it is 200 uh, times stronger than steel. It has excellent conductivity in plane uh, with zero resistance if the structure is perfect. And yeah, this is a two layer material. So uh, one layer of graphite, one could say. And as such, it has a very high surface area. And I can tell you uh, why I got interested in graphene. Um, when I was working with fuel cells, I was working with um, the electrolyte membrane, which was made of a, a fluorocarbon polymer. And uh, you might also know that fluorocarbons are uh, quite toxic, but they are also quite good. Uh, they are the ones which uh, the material in Gore-Tex and Teflon and uh, and uh, like a floor, ski wax and so on. So everybody wants to use it, but nobody wants to have it in their liver because it does not degrade. Um, and I was looking, I did a postdoc uh, to look at alternative membranes that were more environmentally friendly, but uh, they were not really as good as the one uh, with uh, fluorocarbons. And the reason for that was that uh, the uh, carbon floor bond is uh, very extreme and it is the extreme properties with, which makes it good. Uh, but even so, like when, um, when we made more environmentally friendly 
uh, worse membranes. Even then we were using uh, uh, toxic uh, um, solvents. So they were not really environmentally friendly. And I was just in the end quite fed up uh, with this thing that one had to work in that kind of environment as a chemist and that even though we're leaving oil, it's still not good. And uh, yeah, this made me frustrated and I was like, it has to be another way. And this is why uh, I started to think, try to start to think outside of the box. And um, when I met Malin, who does not have a background in this area, I was able to convince her to join me. <laughs> and uh, I'm really grateful, super grateful for that. So we decided that we are going to make uh, hydrogen storage, uh, the, where the hydrogen is bonded to the graphene, and this is going to make it uh, explosion free. But we are going to make our own graphene because we don't like um, to use any graph, uh, mined material. So uh, the first thing on the to-do list was invent a way to produce graphene from uh, lignin because uh, as I moved back to Sweden, I was thinking uh, lignin is the way. This is the un untapped resource. This is uh, how we're going to do it. Um, and um, uh, and before I move on with that story, I, I just have to say that it's like the extreme properties of graphene, which makes it so interesting for hydrogen storage, because with being only one atom layer thick, it's like a material without any bulk and everything happens on the surface in electrochemistry. So it can't get really any better than that. And then together with its conductivity in the plane, I think uh, with a good graphene material, uh, one can really start to see what is possible uh, within energy storage. So this is how it looked like in our first lab. We were renting it in AstraZeneca's old um, uh, facility inside the Telje. It was near my summer house uh, and I moved there for a while. And uh, we made this, uh, you can see the powder in the corner. Uh, it's like, we called it like a graphene uh, carbon composite. And uh, uh, yeah, we could just make so little of this in our tiny oven. Uh, and, uh, but we uh, got a project together with Rice Acrio, so we actually was able to test it as uh, a super cap electrode. Uh, and we made this uh, little pouch cell, so uh, together with them and had it printed. So that was a very uh, nice project. And it showed us that it, this material as it is actually worked quite well as a super cap electrode, but it was not nowhere near where I wanted it to be. Uh, so uh, based on this, we decided to, uh, uh, to move on with the development and to split up uh, the material. And so now we, uh, in our process, we get this a super high quality graphene flake with uh, which has uh, rather big flakes and uh, uh, quite um, nice crystallinity. And then we have also some smaller flakes which uh, are graphene oxide, uh, which we can uh, get a little bit better volume on. And then we get some amorphous carbon, which I guess you could call also hard carbon which we are trying to minimize because our way of producing is not the most cost efficient way to produce that. Uh, so if you look at the graphene uh, market, there are mainly two different types of graphene. There are the graphene nanoplatelets and it's the CVD graphene. And uh, when you hear about all the cool 
features of graphene, then you, it's probably CVD graphene. It's like a single layer. You can make it to any size uh, you want, and it is extremely expensive. And what is viable on the market are the nanoplatelets. They come from graphite. Uh, they are not technically graphene. Very often, they have more than 10 layers. Uh, but they have different properties from pure nanographite, so they are still their own thing, but they could have a lot of quality problems. They are made in bulk, um, so it uh, has been a bit challenging. Uh, our material is uh, still a powder. Uh, we can get uh, rather large uh, flakes. Uh, if you look at the surface, maybe um, up to 1 million uh, times bigger than the nanoplatelets. Uh, they are see-through, uh, so transparent, less than 10 layers. And yeah, we are making them from biomass lignin. Um, so they are also green. And uh, technically speaking, um, uh, the bigger the flakes are, the best, better the electrical properties are. Uh, and we are also doing this in a way which uh, make it possible to scale and keep quality, which is really important with graphene. Uh, and this uh, here you can see like one flake of our premium material. You can see that it uh, actually has this uh, uh, um, hexagonal shape. So it's, uh, it's very crystalline. It has uh, high electrical conductivity and heat conductivity. Um, because we have uh, thin flakes, we get a uh, higher specific surface area and they are transparent. Um, and we don't use any toxic chemicals or solvents in our production line. Um, uh, from our graphene oxide, uh, uh, they are more uh, similar to the, uh, to the uh, nanoplatelets. Uh, for us, it's an advantage that this market is more uh, mature. Uh, and we still, uh, with the groups, we could use them for like, uh, they could be chemically altered a little bit. So they could be used, for example, for uh, sensors and so on and uh, just as with our other material it's also environmentally friendly so um oh, i have to uh, do so that i can see this picture uh, this is then what is possible with our different graphene so we are seeing that our uh, large high quality flakes will be used in uh, energy storage um, uh, we are going to test to use it on screens uh, to replace indium tin oxide, which are on almost every screen. It, would, it makes it uh, so that we have to have these um, glass screens, which are really annoying as uh, they break all the time. Uh, and with graphene, it could be possible again to go to a more um, an a screen which uh, you don't have to put a sticker on in order for it not to break within a month. And also, since uh, indium is a rare earth metal, it would be really nice to replace it. Uh, with the graphene oxide, uh, as I said, we could use it as sensors. We are looking at doing um, an anti-fouling surface uh, on heat exchangers together with the customer and we're also looking together with the customer uh, to make um, um, gas <laughs> like this le uh, leakage free so that we can do packaging i always forget the name damn it uh, and the people from the paper industry knows this uh, 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 barriers it's called barriers so that one doesn't have to have plastic uh, in packaging. Um, yes. So uh, the advantage 
from uh, the um, lignin producer is that we get a really high upside on this material. Uh, we have a number on that lignin would cost 500 USD per ton. Um, we could convert that to a material which in average could be sold for uh, 300 USD per kilo. Uh, so that's, that's rather nice. And when we look at the market, this is uh, uh, the market from 2019. Uh, then we, the yellow represents the uh, low end, which we say is uh, graphene nanoplatelets. And that is dominating at the moment. Uh, and for this market, we have our smaller flakes, the graphene uh, oxide. Uh, but the target market, which, uh, which will grow, that's the uh, electronic application, the energy storage and so on, has, uh, is expected to be the biggest market in 2024. And this is exactly what our uh, premium material is, um, uh, is uh, the best for. And um, scaling up. So um, we started uh, with our uh, with a very small oven, and we could only do micro scale, and that was, of course, extremely frustrating. And this is, in general, uh, a big um, like to scale up and to uh, talk about tons. Uh, with the material which you cannot even see with your bare eye. It's a bit uh, crazy. But uh, now with our continuous lab pilot, we have been, uh, we are uh, producing in gram scale. Um, and uh, our next goal is to, uh, uh, is to build an industrial pilot where we can produce one ton per year. And then uh, 2024, we want to have our full scale production up and running with uh, 80 tons per year. Uh, and what is happening next? We are closing an investment round in the summer. We are applying for uh, an EU program uh, uh, to finance our industrial pilot. And um, we are using uh, the material which we are uh, making in our lab pilot uh, to verify applications which we have together with our early adopting customers. And that was all that I had today. Uh, questions are welcome. Uh, and you can uh, take down my uh, my or Marlin's email and uh, or phone numbers and come back with questions at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for a great and very inspiring presentation. And uh, yeah, I say the same. Uh, take note on, uh, on the contact details, uh, whoever wants to contact you afterwards. And yes, we do have questions in the chat. And um, the first one is, what is the advantage of producing graphene from lignin rather than another carbon source? I think you partly have answered, but please uh, recap on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, lignin is such a good raw material because um, it exists uh, like with this uh, um, ligno boost process, which you have at the Ligno City it's very easily available and it is, uh, yeah, it's very available, I would say, um, in a way which is easy for us to use it. Uh, we, we get the question all the time, can you make it from coffee? Can you uh, grind old furniture and make graphene? And yes, I'm sure you can, but this is uh, maybe not, uh, we are not willing to go uh, somewhere else because uh, lignin is just such a great source. Thanks. And uh, Anna, is your technology protected by any patent? Yes. 
uh, or we have a pa uh, patent pending on uh, on the on how we do it. Yes, uh, but it's um, it should be we are in the final. Uh, we have uh, we have it in the final uh, version. You know where we, uh, on all the markets. <laughs> So, okay. yeah, <laughs> all and, over the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. And uh, uh, first, uh, a thank you and appreciation for your presentation. And how much graphene can you obtain from a kilogram of lignin or biomass? Uh, so, uh, I would say maybe a in combination in uh, graphene and graphene oxide uh, maybe uh, 0.2 like 20 percent yeah good and if more questions pops up just keep uh, typing them and uh, I'm curious to know what do you see as your biggest challenge the next coming years? Oh, we have always a lot of challenges, but um, yeah, we want to uh, we want to get this next uh, pilot up and running, and um, uh, yeah, finding uh, the money for that, finding the right equipment. Um, making it all happen within the time frame when we want to have it happen and not like five, you know, if it cannot take too long time. Uh, we also have a lot of really interesting application projects going on. So uh, they include some challenges as well. But I would say uh, to make uh, enough graphene is a great challenge. Good, and it keeps you busy for the next coming years, and we're happy that uh, lignin from Lignus City can be used in larger scale to be graphene. Yeah. Uh, and you also have ongoing a project where you work with Omid, who spoke before. Oh, yeah, uh, we have actually two ongoing projects. We have uh, um, one which is uh, uh, which is basically uh, one where we are doing a lot of uh, two customer projects and some of the scale up together with Omid, we are working more with the lignin quality uh, because there is a lot to learn how it in, uh, affects our end product. And uh, then we have this uh, interesting project to get, which was founded by uh, um, Vinova and Embra P from Brazil. So we are doing together with them. Um, a Brazilian uh, a supplier, and we are going to make this uh, um, uh, sensors for packaging so that you can send. Uh, uh, I think it was mangoes, and knowing that nothing, um, no, no, nothing bad uh, came in touch with the mangoes. <laughs> 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 it's a little cryptic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how much we can talk about it, uh, uh, but it's a very interesting project. And it's together with the um, uh, Senai, which is the Brazilian um, rice and uh, rice in Vencia uh, with Evelyn and Umid, and also rice Acreo, which probably has an, a new name these days. <laughs> Great, collaboration is, is good. And also a question is, uh, are there any preferences in lignin characteristics like molecular weight functionality, which makes it more suitable for the graphene production? Yeah, I, uh, we prefer lower molecular weight. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, easier uh, to, to make the puzzle, so to say. <laughs> Um, and we are doing mostly with softwood lignin at the moment, but this is also because it's most available here. And uh, we are going to try with hardwood as well. 
but our process is robust. It can handle a lot. <laughs> That's very good. And how, uh, I mean, we are in the middle of a pandemic. That's uh, a reason partly that we are working this digitally as we do. How, how have that affected the Brighter Graphene? Uh, actually, not so much. Uh, we got the investment in when as I used to say, when the shit hit the fan last year. And we got it in like two weeks in. It was amazing. <laughs> and then we have been able to work in peace. Uh, so it has actually been uh, good for us because it has been less running around and more focusing on the process. And there has been some uh, delivery delays, of course but nothing major for us. Good to hear. Uh, <laughs> we have one in that way. <laughs> yeah, but that it can get some positive out of it. And uh, yeah, working digitally, I think that will be for the future as well, because uh, we can meet with so many more people at the same time. And it's, yeah, uh, and you don't have to waste so much time just going back and forth. With the traveling. Yeah. <laughs> We have one last question in the chat, and that's, uh, have you tried to fractionate lignin for MW? For, sorry? Yeah, uh, it's specifically beyond my knowledge of what is MW. Uh, uh, let me see if I can see the chat, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here. At the very bottom. Ah, uh, MW, molecular oh, weight. Of course, molecular weight, thanks. <laughs> yeah, this is something which we are doing together with rice. So, yeah. Uh, uh, we are working on that, yes. Good. Uh, thank you so much, Anna. And uh, we are a few minutes from a full hour. So, I thank you, Anna and Omid. And uh, at the bottom of everyone's screen, you have the possibility to give them a virtual applause. So try to find the reaction bottom and, and press that if you think they are worth an applause, and I think they are, uh, or a, a heads up or, or whatever you like. <laughs> Thank you very much. And as we said, in the middle of uh, April, we will have our next webinar. And uh, this uh, webinar has been recorded. So we will, uh, 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 you will be able to find it on the Ligna City web page within the next few days. Uh, and there are coming thank yous in the chat, which we appreciate a lot. And uh, Omid, do you want to say a last word, please? No, thank you all. And it was a great opportunity to have this presentation. Thank you, Maria, for arranging. Yeah, thank you thank so Thank you much. for joining. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And um, with that, we say thank you for today. And uh, see you next time. See you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.